Ella Rotten, review, please, sir. Thank God for everybody in the house this morning. Praise the Lord. Be blessed, son. What's your mother? Sister Lynn is so good to see you. Good to see you, Mother. Yes, it is. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, morning. sir. All right. Uh, this was I'm going to talk about this lesson. Jesus' first miracle. Yes. I'm going to ask a few questions. Move on out the way. All right. This lesson is another direct continuation from last week's lesson. Yes. <clears throat> what did we talk about last week? The title. Jesus, Jesus called Philip. Jesus calls Philip and they thank him. Amen. It's hard for me. It's hard for me to isolate lessons. Isolate lessons that are continued from previous lessons. Because mm -hmm. we lose some precious context, right? Yes. It helps us to understand what God is saying to us through his word. Yes. Won't be long. <laughs> so in last week's lesson, we ended by seeing that Jesus called Nathaniel an Israelite indeed. Mm -hmm. Jesus said that because of Nathaniel's ancestry was purely Israelite. Jesus called Nathaniel an Israelite indeed. Mm -hmm. I'm asked a question. He said that because Nathaniel's ancestry was purely Israelite? No. No. Why did he call Nathaniel an Israelite indeed? It's faith. Hmm? It's faith. It's faith. He went on to say, in which in whom there is no God. God means deceit, right? Amen. Basically saying he's he's basically saying you're a man after God's own heart. You are a true man of God. You are an Israelite indeed. Mm -hmm. right? All the way down. High compliment. God, from, you know, from Jesus. So Nathaniel was surprised that Jesus <clears throat> was surprised, and Jesus went on to tell Nathaniel in the last two verses of last week's lesson that he will see what? Nathaniel was surprised that Jesus knew all this stuff. Nathaniel was like, you you believe because I told you he was under the oak tree, under the fig tree. He said, you'll see greater <coughs> works. Greater things after this, right? Mm -hmm. Just stick around. So now in this lesson, this is what we're picking up from now. So in this lesson, that'll be in the chapter one. So chapter two, um, it says there was what in Galilee? In Canaan of Galilee. Mary. Nothing good. Mary. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I apologize for that. Marriage or a wedding. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, who was there? Verse 1. At the end of verse 1, it says, Who was there? Jesus. Jesus. And his the mother. The mother of Jesus was there. Oh, yeah. She was there. I'm in agreement with mother. I believe that Jesus' mother was connected to the wedding of the family some kind of way. You know, yes. She might have been a relative. That's just, you know. Says she was there. Verse 2 says, Jesus and who was called and invited to this marriage? Jesus and his, uh, both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. The Bible says Mary was there. At this time, Jesus, I just got this in. At this time, Jesus, according to scripture, only had five disciples, which were Andrew, John, Simon, Philip, Nathan. Verse 3 says, Jesus' mother told him, what? They're out of wine. They're out of wine, right? What was Jesus' response in verse 4? Uh, what did he call her? Woman. 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 Mm -hmm. What have I to do with thee, my hour has not yet come. Now, first off, 
in our culture is responding to your mother by calling her a woman. Is that healthy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it might be the end. <laughs> No, that's not healthy for us. Beat <laughs> down. But that's our culture though, right? That's our culture. This was not this was not our culture. This was Hebrew culture. People get mad at me. Uh, but I make a point, the Bible, we can't the Bible don't fit our culture. Amen. That's the truth. In the sand, uh, brother in the sand, uh, somewhere in there. That that wasn't a uh, disrespect, no. you know, to his mother. It was as if a uh, man would say, "Madam," mm -hmm. uh, you know, would say, "A uh, uh, madam" to uh, a woman exactly. instead of saying, "Woman, madam." Yes, ma'am. That's and, right. Uh, and uh, all it was, it was respect. That's right. That's right. Because I was going to say, uh, the next question was Jesus being disrespectful. And you said no. That's right. He said to her, because he said to. He said to her while he was on the cross in John 19, 26 through 7, woman, while he was on the cross, he said, woman, behold thy son. Right? And he told John, mother, son, behold, but John, he said, son, I mean, you know, behold, son, behold thy mother. Mm -hmm. This was a term of endearment, of respect, like she was saying. She was exactly right. I just made the point. You know, <laughs> Not healthy for us to do that. <laughs> Just making a difference between that was their culture, this is our culture, two different cultures. Mm -hmm. So many times we try to fit the Bible into this culture. This is my point. It just don't they don't line up. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> thank you, mother. For that. That, was, that was good. Verse 5 says, his mother, after Jesus said that his mother instructed the servants to do what? Whatever he said, mm -hmm. do it. Did she have great confidence in Jesus? Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. This was his mother, like mother was saying. She, she knew. Mm -hmm. It was prophesied to her before he was before she was even That's conceived. Right. Mm -hmm. Whoa. whoa. While she was conceived, before he was born, it was prophesied <laughs> what he was going to be. She knew, right? How many how many water pots of stone were there in verse six? Six. Six. The Hebrews used lots, used a lot of water for the for what purpose? In what verse washing. six. Hmm? Washing. Washing. What washing. Mm -hmm. When they come from the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Whatever. They were serious. It says for purification, mm -hmm. right? But that's they were serious. <laughs> uh, that they were a very clean people. Mm -hmm. Mostly for spiritual purposes, but they were still a very clean people. Hmm. Yes, sir. And, and uh, uh, Brother uh, Jesus said in his time, he, he told them, it's not what goes in mm. that the file of man is what comes out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what the file, what you say. That's right. I'm not a... Yes, Lord. Amen. Yeah, so don't, you know, it's, it's not all about the outside. No, no. You know, but they didn't ignore the outside. Mm -hmm. Amen. But it's definitely, you know, it's, it's, what, it's what comes out. And, hey, that's a, ooh, good stuff, good stuff. So how much water was in each water pot? Uh, I believe it said 20 gallons. Six gallons. Mm-hmm. It says two or three firkins. It was far as the Bible says. And each firkin, y'all know how much a firkin was? <laughs> it's a no. <laughs> My research says a little less than nine gallons Six. was one firkin. Perfect. They said in the book about ten gallons wow. of firkin. So, according to my research, I know the math adds up. Two or three, two or three firkins would have been about eighteen to twenty-seven gallons mm -hmm. a piece. Wow. 
Those are some big old pots, yeah. right? Right. Yes. Sir. Each one holding 18 to 20 to 30 gallons apiece. Mm -hmm. It's a big old making the grand total of all the, all six pots 100, you know, 108 to 262 gallons of water. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jesus told the servants in verse 7 to do what? Fill the water pots. Fill the water pots with water. The servants filled them how full? Verse to 7. Brim. To the brim. To the brim or completely full. Mm -hmm. Jesus told them to do what in verse 8? Draw it out, out to the bear. Draw it out and take it to who? The governor. The governor. Governor. Or, or the ruler. Mm -hmm. Did the servants... Take the did the servants take the portion of the wine that they had drew that, the, that they drew out to the governor? Did they do it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Did the governor or ruler know that this wine was made by Jesus? No. no. Verse nine says, "Who knew?" Jesus. Yeah. Disciples knew. of verse nine. Uh, yeah. The servants. The servants said, "But the servants knew, mm -hmm. right?" Well, again, by the middle of verse 9. So who did the governor call to himself right. at the end of verse 9? The bridegroom. Right. Because the governor thought who was responsible for this good wine? Right. Bridegroom. So what did, what did the governor say to the bridegroom in verse 10? You saved the best for life. You, say, you did this. You saved the best for life, right? Mm -hmm. Because they were accustomed to doing that. Exactly. And it, it, it makes sense, you know. I mean, if you think about it like that. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, or give but, the best to the dignitaries that are higher and give the cheaper wine to the people that are, don't have a whole lot of standards. Yeah, and also, uh, you know, they said you never have a second chance to make a first impression. <laughs> That's you true. Know, so Amen. you want to give them the good stuff first. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. it, it just makes sense. So, so... But the governor told the bridegroom, you, you, you has kept a good wine until now. Mm -hmm. So which wine was better? The wine that they had at the beginning or the wine God made? God made. Uh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Verse 11 said, this was the what of miracles? The beginning. Yeah. The, beginning of the beginning. And manifested what? Glory. God's glory, right? Manifested God's glory. And who believed on Jesus after all this? The disciples. Fully. They fully believed on Jesus. Now, Jesus made wine at this wedding because he wanted to get everybody drunk. No. <laughs> <laughs> like Mother said, this was a big deal for a wedding in that culture. Being out of wine was a big embarrassment to the wedding party. So Jesus supplied a what? Yeah. A need, need. Mm -hmm. right? It was a need mm -hmm. for the family, for the wedding party. It was a need. Mm -hmm. yes. Jesus supplied a need. Mm -hmm. And God supplies our mm -hmm. needs, mm -hmm. right? We can always depend on God to supply all of our mm -hmm. needs. Man. This is all for the glory of God. God. Yes, sir. <laughs> He's glorified in all of this. Right? Mm -hmm. he, 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 he has desire. He takes great, you know, just like a father. Loves as a father, I, I love to give my children things. Mm -hmm. you know, and don't let them do something or say something. You know, I mean, you just, oh, man, well, what you want? You know, just. But, but it's, it's a parent's delight to give their children, right? Just to give their children. That's how God feels about us. Mm -hmm. he, he desires to. And we hate to give them a spanking. We hate to, but we have to yeah. give them a spanking when they're wrong. Mm -hmm. And that's what questions are, you know, when they have to get a whooping. Mm -hmm. That they really adjust yourself to show them that it's love, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, who that Job said, shall we expect good from God and not mm. evil also. But that's a mature conversation there. Mm. Uh, but yeah, if we really love them, you know, we're going to give them what they need. We're going to give what they need. Right? Mm. <laughs> sometimes they need this, sometimes they need that. But, but you know, it's, it's, 
it's just the, the heart of a parent, the heart of love is to give, right? And that's, you know, evidence of, evidence of love is sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Anyway, any other thoughts? Or? I just want to comment on um, the part where um, Mary said uh, to Jesus, she was talking to her son on the, on the level, you know, of understanding. Um, and he told her, but it's not my time. So she must have knew this. But she pumped him like you would prime something. Sometimes we have to be primed a little bit to find out who we are. Your, your grandmother told me one day, she said, God's going to really use you one day, but you got to let him. So I didn't ever, you know, get that picture in my mind until I said, well, if that's true, then I need to get somewhere where he can. So I pictured it in my mind. So that is how people get moved into that pace of running for God. You know, somebody has to, uh, who was that, uh, Timothy, one of them, gave him the, the, um, the marathon. It was like a race, but somebody has to give you that thing that, you can go. So I think Mary kind of knew it was kind of a push for Jesus, like a little, you do your baby. You can walk, you can walk, it's time, you know. So I think if, you know, we kind of have our children in this world and we give them the things they need, sometimes they need to go to college and not be at home, you know, just this and that. So I just wanted to add that. Yeah, that's the that's job also, the job of a parent is a guy who can't just let them do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. Not guided by what they like, guided by what's best for them. Because we love them. That's true. That's so true. They do need to be encouraged. Our words are encouraged. Words are so important. Words, words are more than just, you know, words. If, if I can say, and I'm just going to say this, I can say something by my words, and it's going to change how you feel. Right. Yes. Right? Yes. You can say something to somebody, good or bad, and something yes. happens in your body. I didn't put no hands on you, but I said something to you. Yes. So words changes chemical reactions mm. in our body, yes. right? right. Words, good the, things. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. So we really do have to speak life, like words of encouragement. Sometimes it's, it's a powerful thing. Words mm -hmm. is it's big. It's right. big. Right. And the main thing, I'll just say this. We, we must be light to ourselves yes. first, yes. right? Make sure our ears hear our mouth saying, speaking of light, every chance we get. Yes. Right. Right. I, know he's, I, I know he's a weird person. Oh, can I add one thing? I was at work, and I, you know, I try to work in a position, like Brother Brian said, where you're being paid to work, not take your ministry to work and start taking out time and preaching to people. And so the Lord will give you discernment on people at the job that don't have what you have. And the young lady had been doing great. You know, she'd been doing really well. And I started noticing her persona had changed from uh, at work being glad. And then she had this spirit of depression. And I said, is everything okay? You know, people kill themselves when somebody don't talk to them. Mm -hmm. And so it's easy nowadays. People practice it on websites. I'm, committing suicide and stuff like an act of it's over you know nothing's going to happen after that but I talked to her and uh, I said is everything all right as an older woman I have a right to minister to younger women that have children you know because I've raised mine and so she said well I'm having trouble with my daughter I said okay is there anything that I can talk to you about you know she said well my daughter has threatened to kill herself over and over and over. And I was like, oh God, how long is this gonna take because I'm at work? Because not that she didn't matter, but I had to really quickly interact. And she said, I said, how old is your daughter? You know, I'm thinking her daughter's up in her 20s or 30s, you know, where problems may have come, but her daughter is 16 years old. And I'm like, really? She said, well, I said, where is she? She said, well, I, she's at home. I said, okay. I said, well, have you talked to some doctors about giving her some help? She said, that has not worked. You know, and in my mind, I know it's a spirit. But I can't tell a person that don't walk with God every day how to handle this. But her daughter has threatened, her daughter's boyfriend has moved in. I said, now why is the boyfriend there? I said, then I began to really talk to her. I said, because 
he doesn't, he shouldn't be in your home and with your daughter. You're the mother. She said, but she's threatening to kill herself if I tell him to leave. So this is a, a game. About, the devil has blocked this woman. I said, so do you have family that you can talk to? Uh, like you were just, I have my brother. She said, so I'm adopted. So then God began to show me, this is a case right now. That you're opening up for me to handle, not for you to handle. So I was like, Lord, just do it, whatever. As quickly as possible, let me, you know. I said, can I pray for you? That was all I could do. And I, she, I prayed with her. And she just, you know, really brought that down to a level that she was willing to get somebody. You can't pray for everybody. People are not willing to accept some prayers. So we prayed. She came through that a few days later. Man, she said, I want to tell you thank you for that prayer. I said, and I, I just didn't mention her daughter. I just said, you know what? When we let God do the, what we, you know, give our children over to God, and we take authority in our home, then we'll have peace in our home. And so I don't know what's going on, but I think that she got some authority from a person that goes, because we should have more than we think. You know, God will rise up in you and take over in a situation like this. So I thank God that I've lived a life where I can sense depression on somebody. Able to not take my job from my church, but take my church to my job. So thank you for that floor space. I just wanted to let people know, pray for that young lady with me. She's beautiful. And um, people, parents can go under so much pressure. Money doesn't solve nothing. It's, it's like it's an answer, but it doesn't solve real problems of the human life. Thank God for the prayers of the saints. Father God, we thank you for what you're doing by your spirit. Thank you for your word, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. We thank you for your signs, your wonders, God, things that are causing people to believe your word. Thank you for showing us, to show, to showing you. We thank you, Father, for showing us you in a greater way, God, that we can just believe and get to know you even more. Yes. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Father. We thank you for what you're doing in the bodies of the people. We're constantly praying for the sick and the shut-in, God. We thank you for doing the work. We, we, we take you at your word. We're not distracted by what we see. We thank you for what you're doing by your spirit and the bodies of your people for your glory, God. We thank you, Father. We thank you for the word that's coming forth. And we thank you for what you're doing in our lives. For your glory, we thank you forever. Amen. Amen. We'll get our Sunday school offering at this time.